spirit of excellence is not what we do, but it's how we do what we do. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's how we do what we do. So to make it make sense to you, I had to make, I had to make it make sense to me. So the spirit of excellence in my mind is a unit of measurement. It serves as a unit of measurement to assess the quality of a particular outcome. You put in work, you assess the quality, okay? Uh, to illustrate what I mean by that, Genesis chapter one says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So he created the heavens and the earth, he created us, man, he created the uh, animals, day and night, all these, all these different things. He created it, he put work into it, then he stepped back and said, it is good. It's the unit of measurement the spirit of excellence. It's a unit of measurement to determine the quality of a particular outcome. Okay? So, we are encouraging in the, in the practice of the spirit of excellence to do things at the best of your ability. I received a phone call from um, a cousin of mine about three weeks ago. And she has a daughter and she has two sons. She told me that her daughter, uh, she went into her daughter's room, and her room was junky. Her, her uh, she's about five or six years old. Her room was filthy, junky. Toys all over the floor, even clothes all over the floor. So the daughter came to the mother and said, Mom, I want to watch a movie. I want to watch a movie, something like Nemo or something like that. And she says, no, you're not going to watch a movie until you clean your room, okay? I'm pretty sure many of us heard that before. So she says, you're not gonna watch a movie until you clean your room. So she goes into her room, she cleans her room, she comes back out and says, mom, I cleaned my room, can I watch my movie? Mom goes into the room, looks in, looks in the room, and the, the, there's no toys on the floor, there's no clothes on the floor, she says, okay. You can watch a movie. The mom had um, in her possession one of the girl's toys. It was like in her room or something like that. So she went into her room because the girl has a little toy chest that you put all your toys in. The girl, uh, she went into the girl's room, opened the toy chest, and there's all of her toys. However, she put her clothes in the toy chest too, knowing that well that the clothes belong in the closet because what she was doing is that she was pursuing the benefit instead of paying attention to the responsibility. Okay? So what the mother does, as any mother would do, she goes and cuts that movie off and says, get your butt back in that room and do it right. Okay? So she says, go back in the room, do it right. Of course she went back in the room, did it right, and then she was able to continue on with the movie. So, the girl, the little girl, when the mom came in and assessed the outcome, this, she measured the quality of the outcome of her daughter. She went in, she saw that it wasn't done to the best of her ability. However, now, the, now, like I said, the spirit of excellence is not what we do, it's how we do it. So, the girl did just enough to satisfy the question, did you clean your room? However, she did not do it to the best of her ability. So, she couldn't step back and say, this is good. She could only step back and say, it's enough. So, what the little girl did is that she did just enough because she was pursuing the benefit instead of the responsibility. Does that make sense? When you put your best in something, you'll reap the best outcome. So if you put your best into cleaning your room, you will reap the best outcome of being to continue on from start to finish your movie. Speaking of the best, we serve a best God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Let's translate that using the spirit of excellence. We serve a best God. So this best God put work into merging divinity and humanity the best possible way he could. Which is, us, which is his son, Jesus Christ. And then he gave his only son with the best of intentions because he loved us. Okay? So that whoever believeth in the best will not perish, but have the best life. That makes sense? Since, since God formed, merged this divinity and humanity together in the best possible way, that makes Jesus a best outcome. That makes Jesus a best outcome. So that every, since Jesus was created, if you will, a, in the spirit of excellence, that means that he embodies now the spirit of excellence. And that everything that he does, and you can read it in the Bible, everything that he does is done in excellence. Which now makes him the best possible candidate to use for equipping and empowering leaders. So the core value for equipping and empowering leaders is all believers, with no regard to age, gender, or race, are supported and encouraged in all areas of leadership. We aim to cultivate an atmosphere where leadership abilities are developed, enhanced, and practiced. That's RCF's core value. It, to um, further dig deeper into empowering and equipping leaders, I want to go to John chapter 21. And I want to read verse, verses 4 through 11. Let's translate that into this metaphor. You have the disciples who represent the net. They're tightly woven. They're interlocked. They're connected. They have been strategically placed in the multitude. They've been strategically placed in the multitude. They have been tested. They have been proven. They're confident in their ability. Now, the prophetic part comes in of them carrying the load. They haven't been in this place. They have not been in the position of actually carrying the load yet because Jesus is still here in chapter 21. However, if we use this as a metaphor, it's telling them that their responsibility is carrying the multitude to the place where Jesus is. He's telling them in this metaphor that once this weight or this responsibility is transferred over to you, please understand that it will be your responsibility to do what I'm doing right now. I am saying here that if you believe in me, you will not perish, but you will have the best life. So when I leave, it's now your responsibility as the leader that I have trained you to be, to take the load or the sheep that I have cultivated, that I have built, it is your responsibility to wrap them in your neck and bring them to the place where I am. Because remember, the Bible says that they were 200 cubits away. That means that the multitude was separated from Jesus. Just like God was separated from his people. That the sins of the people drew the multitude, humanity, away from God. And he sent his son to be able to connect the two. Without the son being, in, being the connecting point of the two, it means Jesus is going to be ascended to heaven. Without that key component, somebody has to sit in the middle. Who sits in the middle? It is the leaders. 
the empowered and the equipped leaders, the disciples that Jesus trained to be able to take his place. When Jesus ascended, he passed the torch to the disciples to stand in the gap. You bring the sheep to me. I take the sheep to the Father. It is the importance in those four phases or steps. Get connected. Get planted. Get empowered. And get going. Say it with me. Get connected. Get planted. Get empowered. And get going. Stand with me. Get connected, get planted, get empowered, and get going. And all of this is to be done in the spirit of excellence. Amen? Equipping and empowering leaders in the spirit of excellence.